All right, we are back. We are here at Table Talk, and it's so good to be with you here at Table Talk for the Season 3, Episode 3. And this week, we're especially excited because we have Pebbles Forbes back at the table with us. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again. Yes. And But also, uh, we're about to say goodbye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Yes. Uh, you're leaving... This week? Thursday, yes. Thursday, and you're leaving for, it's a very difficult terrain and <laughs> geography. feel yeah. really sorry for you. Mm-hmm. In Hawaii, yeah. Hawaii, okay. <laughs> but it is on mission. Yes. So uh, <laughs> in that, we know that you are called. And you also, like Connor, a mm-hmm. few weeks ago, saw it with, mm-hmm. with Connor Jones here, mm-hmm. um, or with YWAM. Yes. We say that. What, what does YWAM stand for? And tell us a little bit about what mm-hmm. your focus is going to be on. So YWAM stands for Youth with the Mission. It's an interdenominational missions organization where they train you for missions and ministry. So the school I'm going to be doing is called School of Truth and Transformation, where we look at like controversial topics, hard topics with mm. biblical perspective. What is truth and why do you believe what you believe? Oh, fantastic. Almost a little bit of the summer sermon series on questions maybe play into that some so good well it's always a blessing to us uh when you go and are just uh in god's word and around others and you come back and bless us and so we hope that happens again (laughs) and we can see at the table but thanks for serving river oaks and um uh, we will pray for you, and we're excited. But thanks for being at the table today, and Pastor David. Good to be back. Back at good the table. Yeah. yeah. So we've um, we understand that really this last week away that you had been on some study leave, and you're working on another podcast. Yes. Tell us about yes. that. If you want um, to well, uh, what I'm working on is one daily podcast, five days a week. Okay. Hopefully, it'll fill up a year. But um, the topic of prayer throughout the whole Bible, wow. in other words, wherever prayer is practice, taught, or implied in some cases, really? uh, starting with the life of Jesus in the Gospels through the end of the New Testament, and then <clears throat> okay. from Genesis to the end of the Old Testament. Okay. So we'll see if that works out to be a year's worth, and we'll see when it's all done. But mm-hmm. it, oh, that's it'll exciting. Take a while. It'll take a while. A, a bit like the, uh, the Psalm, starter. Psalm Starter, Yes. and uh, this will be something that we'll look forward to. And uh, in the so. near future, I hope so. First year or something. We'll see how much is done by yeah. the beginning of the year. If so it, it may yeah. start in January. Well, really yeah. interesting. Uh, real quick on that makes me think: Would you say that you can find a um, implied prayer or actual prayer in every book of the Bible? Um, I haven't gotten to them all yet. Okay. But, <laughs> okay. Um, not necessarily. Okay. All right. Not necessarily. Okay. Some are just chock full of prayer. I okay. Mean, uh, yes. if, if 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 we need to do a whole bunch, well, the Book of Psalms is a place yes, for that. So yes. many of them are are prayers. Okay. But um, there are a few where, you know, maybe a blessing is implied. You look at maybe sure. um, Second John, Third John, those little short letters or something like that. Okay. Um, well, thanks for your work on that. Uh, really oh, it's fun. To, it's very edifying work. Anxious, it's enjoyable. Yes. Enjoyable. It would be very helpful. So thanks. And uh, this week, so we're back in Luke, Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 34. It is part three, section three in your certainty guide, if you're looking for that wealth and worry. And so let's just jump right in. Uh, we'll read the first passage and we're just going to talk about it and have some conversation and see if we can study a little bit and uh, study alongside you guys. Grab your Bible and look to Luke 12. Pebbles, verse 13 through 21 would be great. Okay. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on guard against all covetedness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, Drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the thing you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Pebbles. I, you know, I, I'm still just uh, 
I'm amazed at really the the awkwardness of the interruption here by the man. You know, Jesus is teaching to this crowd, and he's talking about acknowledging God before men, yeah. and or acknowledging Him before men. Yeah. And he says, "Well, and don't worry, because the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say." And it feels like if this guy on cue says, "Oh, and I've got a word to say," <laughs> um, what what do we make of this? What, what's uh, David? Was this just a really mature, insightful? You know, interruption or <laughs> I think it was the epitome of immaturity. Yes. Inappropriateness. Because yeah. Jesus was teaching serious things and this mm-hmm. guy says, Tell my brother to share. Mm-hmm. Yeah, family inheritance. It it seems out of place. But Jesus uh chose to use that as a teachable moment, yeah. mm-hmm. discerning apparently covetousness in this man's heart yeah. and did a powerful teaching here. Yeah. On, uh, the danger of greed to take yeah. hold of the human heart. He, he speaks right right to him about uh, just coveting, and he tells this parable. You hear this parable, Pebbles? Any thoughts that uh, come to mind on that? Yeah, I something that I thought about when I was reading over it is when the man is saying he's going to store up in the parable all his goods, and he says, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, mm. eat, drink, be merry. It makes me think about in the chapter before in the Lord's prayer, how he teaches us to pray for daily bread. And he's Mm -hmm. trying to, and even in Exodus, when manna was raining down from heaven for their, for day to day, that God doesn't give us stale bread, but he gives us Mm -hmm. bread that we need daily. And this guy's storing it all up for many years to come. And there's another little story that someone told me one time was, um, this, this man gets predicted his death. And so he starts stacking up all his bl- blocks of gold and he puts them in his suitcase and his luggage and he finally makes it to the gates of heaven and Peter's there to greet him and he's like what do you have in your bag and he says oh these are all my riches that I've been storing up and Peter says those are like the roadblocks we have here that what we think on earth are riches are just the road in heaven, yeah. paid with gold. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of worthless to that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. Which is really becomes the, the message of what yeah. the parable is, yeah. is um, we, where are we placing our heart, mm-hmm. uh, our priorities? Uh, I, I think when I read this, and one of the questions in our study guide this week, David and Pebbles, is what, what's the modern telling of this parable? Mm. You know, parables were meant to have common, you know, images and things for that audience. Yeah. So how might we retell it? And I just think immediately to the the plethora. It seems like just overnight the uh, the hundreds of storage units. Uh, and those mm-hmm. sort of facilities right. that are being built, right? Mm-hmm. And there's appropriate times for those, whatever. But right. it's almost as if we say, hey, I've got all this stuff and I want to hold on to it. Yeah. I've got a room, put it in a storage unit, you know, and then I'll fill it with more stuff. <laughs> and then I'll get another storage unit and I'll fill it with more stuff. Yeah. Uh, when all the while it just sits. How, how do we know? Is this a, a, a parable necessarily about how much is enough? I mean, is this enough? To, is this a parable that says, okay, you should never have more than one barn? Or how do, how do we read into that, David? Because it's easy to say, hey, you know, that guy's way too wealthy. He's got way too many barns. Yeah. And I think that's a trap too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I don't think there's a specific number, dollar amount, anything like that, that you can <clears throat> apply across the board to every person. But two, yeah. two emphases. One, the warning. Take heed. Mm-hmm. Watch out. Be on your guard. Covetousness. Yes. You can be covetous when you're poor. Yeah. Um, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. It has a subtle ability to take the heart, to steal the devotion. That's why Jesus said no one can serve two masters. You can't serve God and money or mm-hmm. God and mammon. Yeah. But secondly, concludes it by, by this warning, a fairly sobering statement, that um, so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And so mm-hmm. the key is, am I being rich toward God? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I be, whether whether I make you know ten thousand dollars a year or a million dollars a year? Am mm-hmm. I being rich toward God? Mm-hmm. And I think that varies from person to person, but we have to honestly ask ourselves that. Yeah. So so what is rich toward God? How do we how do we know that? <laughs> what, what might that look like? Yeah. Something I'm thinking of is. For YWAM, we have to fundraise for everything. Everything's 100% fundraise, students and staff. And so 
for people coming into YM for the first time, sometimes it might be hard when you feel like your whole life you've had to work for your money and then people are starting to donate to you and you're like, I haven't done anything to earn this money. And what we have been taught in YWAM is first off, it's God's money. That's mm. the reason we're even getting it in the first place. Yeah. And so, of course, we're super grateful for anything that comes in. But it's we can see that accept it better when it's like this is the Lord's yeah. money first. Yeah. Well, and, and um, you know, I think looking up a, f- a few verses too may be an indication where it looks like the end result of of this man's wealth was to eat, drink, and be merry. Mm. And it yeah. almost, I think it's interesting, that the, the word that's used is, is Jesus in the parable specifically, I believe the Greek there is the psyche or the soul. Soul, you have all these things. Almost mm. if it's like his whole identity, his whole, yeah. everything yeah. about his whole being is, okay, I've done all this so that I can mm-hmm. now be merry in myself the pleasure, right. the, the eye problem that you've mentioned yeah. about. Whereas uh, someone who is storing up riches toward God might have the same accumulation, but th- at that point then just say, okay, Lord, mm. you have ample things. You have all this ample wealth. How would you like it used? Yeah. And that may be, be part of that difference too, uh, mm-hmm. the, the storing up the riches toward God. But um, really, um, I, I also... Uh, it, uh, warned or advised our small group leaders in the equipping class yesterday this is a really easy one to get into a sort of finger pointing Mm -hmm. right a comparison right and i think you're right david we we have to be real careful not to compare like well just because this person has this level or doesn't they're either not rich toward god or they they shouldn't have and we see throughout the new testament that, that god blessed many who thankfully blessed the church with their great wealth mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, were yeah. very helpful. So a very, very good passage to, re- to reflect on. All right, well, <laughs> the next passage is connected, interestingly, although it's not directed at the man. So, David, would you read uh, the continuation yeah. here, tw- 22 through 31 of Luke 12? And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither Mm. toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you're to eat and what you're to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom. And these things will be added to you. A continuation, it feels like, again, with the, uh, the phrasing here from the parable, turning to the disciples, what's the connection? Why, why would he not continue to teach them about how to use their resources or uh, covetousness and greed? Any thoughts? Did you, did you see that connection here, David? Well, yeah, his, um, his followers are called to a, a pretty high standard of devotion right. to Christ. I mean, he didn't twist people's arms to follow him. Right, right. Uh, to some people, he said, sell everything you've got, like yeah. the rich young ruler, and, and follow me. Um, I, I find this passage much more challenging to understand and apply to my own life than the prior passage. Mm. Because I found myself asking, okay, does that, what does that mean about saving for retirement? <laughs> I mean, I'm one that's always felt it important not only to give but yeah. to save yeah. Yeah. so that one day you're not dependent on other people, you know? Um, so I find this a very challenging passage, mm-hmm. frankly. But um, his disciples are called here. I think what he's calling us to here is trust, faith, yeah. trust yeah. in God as provider, and seeking first his kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost as if he's uh, anticipating a question, you know, all right, you know, Lord, if, if I'm not going to at all costs pursue the building up and accumulation 
for my own good and my own, you know, uh, you know, provision, mm-hmm. and I'm going to release it, and those aren't going to be my priorities. You may still bless me with it. Then huh, I think I might be a little stressed. I might be a little worried. I might be a little anxious yeah. about that. And maybe he felt that in the disciples and said, "Okay, yeah. it's it's, it's it, <laughs> good point. You know, I don't know. Point. I Pebbles, maybe. any any yeah. thoughts on that? Or I think that's a good point. To the disciples may have been a little anxious. Oh, I'm not supposed to store up. And he's like, "Hey, you don't even have to worry. I, your yeah. father knows your need before you even have to think about it." Yeah, yeah, and and not this isn't uh, you know this is also what is it not saying? Mm-hmm. It's not saying uh, it's not a doctrine on laziness or idleness yeah. as, as far as promoting that. It's not right. don't worry, be happy. It's not don't plan, don't work, mm-hmm. don't struggle, <clears throat> toil. Uh, I think it's just really don't worry about those things that are temporal when you can trust me. Instead, worry about those things that are eternal. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love, I think that's very poetic, the way he uses that with Solomon as well. Yeah. When you, th- you just think about all the glory, just again, Solomon was all about all the gold mm-hmm. and the brilliance and the majesty and the grandiose and the, the, just all of that. And um, they would have known that and he would have turned to that lily and just said, but that's more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Look, look at how it's displayed. Mm-hmm. So if, if I can take care of that, then I can certainly take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what a great, uh, seek his kingdom. How do we do that? Well, I think the kingdom of God has to be first in our view, our vision, our Mm -hmm. priority, Mm -hmm. our heart. Yeah. Like what you're doing, Pebbles. Some people Mm -hmm. are called to to go into missions like Mm -hmm. you're doing. Others are called to seek first his kingdom by doing their best work possible as a nurse, as a physician, as a teacher, as Mm a business leader. Um, whatever our vocation, yeah. we're called to put God in his kingdom first, realizing yes. our lives on earth are temporary. Life with him will be eternal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it, it, it comes with it, the, the promise of contentment mm-hmm. and peace that relieves the anxiety and the stress as well. Yeah. Right. That's uh, it, it's if we can get to that level of trust, then we, we sort of conquer those anxieties with uh, contentment in him. Well, good. Well, the last part of that, and this is maybe where, you know, it all comes kind of, he ties it up here, right? In 32 through 34, and he says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Remember, fathers, he gives good gifts. Mm -hmm. We've seen that already in this uh, here in Luke. Sell your possessions, give to the needy, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm. Period. (laughs) I think that's the key verse, verse 34, for for really both passages. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you if you tie it back to the passage in in Matthew six in the Sermon on the Mount, where this this latter section we've looked at is much like that right. section, and that one Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Mm-hmm. You're going to be devoted yes. to one, despise right. the other. You can't serve God of money. And he's after the full devotion of the mm-hmm. heart. Yeah, yeah. But sell my possessions. It sounds like Jesus is just another pastor asking me to tithe. <laughs> and to give everything I got to him. Well, he says give it to the needy, actually. Okay. The poor. Don't I have to give it to him. Uh, right. That's wow. right. Okay. So, and also in Matthew 25, I believe, when it says pretty much give to the... Or when I was naked, you clothed me. And when yeah. I was hungry, you fed yeah. me. That's mm-hmm. the least, the last, the lost. But it says yeah. when you did it unto those, you did it to me, too. Right. So, yeah. So, So is that a literal act of obedience to um, sell our house, our cars, all but one set of clothes. Somebody's got to own some houses. That's a- <laughs> it's a challenge, but it's, it's um, you've got to re- interpret Scripture with Scripture. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Read it in the whole context <clears throat> Great. Yeah. of Scripture. Was he talking specifically to those who literally, many of the disciples were literally leave, leaving everything yeah. behind, leaving their fishing yes, nets yeah. and fishing boats. Yeah. They were going off with him. Um but if that's his call to us, yeah. yeah. If we look further in Luke, it's interesting. There's a lot about material possessions in Luke, as you, you know right. from right. writing the studies. But uh, to the rich young ruler, sell it all. Right. Follow me. I think it's the very next chapter, Zacchaeus. Um, he doesn't tell him to do anything, but of his own accord says, I'm giving yeah. half my goods to the mm-hmm. poor. Yeah. 
And if I defrauded anybody, I'll pay them fourfold. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. Yeah. So not 100%. Here it's 50, but Jesus didn't tell them to do that. And so yeah. it's, it's where the person's heart is. It's how God's dealing with them. But yeah. where's your heart? Where's your treasure? Yeah. Is it in the kingdom of God? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, um, but certainly some level of giving is, is going to be called for yeah. if, if we have something. Not an absolute prohibition of of items, possessions, mm-hmm. but I I think more you know, and even at that time, that was a way that they were funding other believers, right? right. They were they right. were right. watching out for right. more communal, right. more, and so that would have been very practical as yeah. well. But yeah. also, you know, I think it when I hear this, I I think about the you know we can either grasp what we have or we can sort of open our hands mm-hmm. yeah. and allow God to let slip through whatever He wants. And I think if we're just willing to say it's all yours. Let whatever slip through that, that you need f- to help yeah. do. Um, allow me to retain what I need. Maybe not what I always, you know, <laughs> d- fully desire or, or you know want. Yeah. But um, that that's really the idea of getting where our, where our treasure is. There, your heart will be also. But uh, it's it is challenging. I mean, it is the you, you tied it into the tithing though, and ten um, percent. Uh, that's the rule, right? That's the and that, that's the. That's the 11th commandment, maybe. Well, I hope I didn't say that. No. <laughs> um, I don't think tithing's a law for the right. believer. I think right. it's a principle. Okay. A principle of first fruits. Personally, I think it's a good starting place for faithful stewardship. Yeah. Um, but, you know, take the person, take the person who gets, gets their first job and they're, they're doing really well. They get out of college. They're, they're, they're making $50,000. And they say, I'm going to tithe to God. Seems mm. like I got all the money in the world. I can live on 45000 mm. Say the person does great. Ten years later, it's making 500000 It's a little harder to tithe that $50,000. Yeah. But why has God blessed him? Is it so he can go from a 45000 to a $450,000 yeah. lifestyle? Or does God have something much more in mind? Yeah. And I think it's the latter. Mm-hmm. John Wesley famously you know, he had that first starting year salary, and then it said that every year after, whatever they gave him or he made more, he just gave, He just it's said, I, I survived amazing. on this. Yeah. I don't need any more. And yeah. um, that was just became a principle of his life, yeah. too. So it's, yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it is the, are we giving as a, uh, as a gift? Or, and, and would you say it's true that if we feel like we are um, being required to give and the heart is not in it, it's better not to give? Do you go that far, would you say? Or is it still an act of obedience? Or I think the Apostle Paul said um, that we should not give under compulsion, for okay. God loves a cheerful giver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I never like it when I feel like somebody's you know, really putting the pressure mm-hmm. on. I've been in settings where people take offerings that are very, I think, inappropriate. Mm-hmm. And uh, pressuring people, putting emotional appeals. When I see that on television, I just I cringe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, God loves a cheerful giver, yes. a joyful giver. Yeah. And, and uh, stewardship applies to the, uh, the local body church as well. Mm-hmm. The, the selling possession to give the needy is, again, the, the mission yeah. of the church should also be right. the stewarding of, of tithes in a way that's helpful to, yeah. uh, to those around. And that's uh, why we're going. We've gone beyond 10% and are just mm-hmm. in, increasing yeah. for the spiritually and materially needy. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that less? Where your treasure is. I think it can go along with just being obedient to the Lord. It can be, Lord, yeah. what do you want me to give? Yeah. It could even go to, it doesn't have to feel like it's a, you have to do this yeah. when it's cheerful and you don't even know. You could That's just right. be like, Lord, show me what you want me to yeah. give, what belongs to you. And that start could be just, you know, allow me to unclench my fist, <laughs> right? Allow me just to have it open mm-hmm. and then uh, and then show me, right? Yeah. Um, before we do the final sprint, last thought, well, you know, again, our final sprint, David, what we're saying is just, uh, what's that sort of just one little sentence to a sentence encouragement to someone on why they should actually read this passage? What are they going to get out of this? What's, you know, what, uh, what would you, you know, advise someone? But before we do, we did have a question, just clarification. Uh, you mentioned from Genesis 14, uh, when you were talking about the giving and tithing that Abraham uh, was was tithing to Melchizedek, king of Salem, and then also the king of 
Uh, I think you'd mentioned Babylon, and this listener very astutely said, I thought that was the king of Sodom. And um, either you can fill us in on maybe something else you were thinking, or it was just a mixing and matching names. There may be or I may have misspoken. I'm okay, not, it, okay. It may be that I misspoke. I don't care. I, I don't. It's not that I don't care. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I do care very much. I don't remember. I don't. Yeah. And I, and yeah. I haven't gone back and listened. Yeah. I don't like to go back and listen to my own messages. I, I yeah. I like that's right. Yeah. See that's right. But if in fact it was bad, I was just just yeah. sort of yeah. a slip I of the. Probably, yeah. I probably. But King Sodom, you were thinking of that Genesis 14 passage. I and, think so, yeah. And Abraham basically was never asked to give. He just gave. He just gave. And, and how did he know to give 10%? Why did he give 10%? Yeah. Nothing prior to that in the Bible about tithing. But it's interesting. And it that's is. why I think it's a good uh, first fruits yeah. principle. It was King of Sodom who said, well, just give me the people. You keep all the, the, the money. Yeah. And Abraham said, no, 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 no. Lest you say that Abraham was rich yes. or was made rich from yes. this. So I don't want that on on me. <laughs> and so he knew that he had to offer he that. Knew God provided it all. That's mm-hmm. the key to to stewardship. Is it God? Yeah. God yeah. provides it all. The air we breathe, the yeah. opportunities we have. God yeah. gives it all. Oh, that's right. great. Thank you, Dave. Final sprint. Why why this passage, Pebble? I say um in verse verse thirty one. So I think for both of the first little chunk that we read, that I read, and then the second little chunk that David read, um, that greed could has the potential to consume your heart so much that it could take the place of God, mm. when really, in verse 31, instead, seek his kingdom, and then these things will be added to you. So, like, instead of trying to store up your riches and, and trying to worry about things, instead yeah. of doing those things... And letting greed consume you, or worry and anxiety consume you, just seek Jesus. Yeah, seek Jesus, seek the kingdom. Yeah. Thank you, Pebbles. David, any final thought? And why so I just, just uh, I think it, it leads us to ask ourselves the question: What does it mean to be rich toward God? What does it mean for yeah. me to be rich toward God? To live with eternal values, putting first His kingdom. What Jesus taught about handling of money yeah. was very challenging. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, think. I find it challenging yeah. myself. Well, for me, I'll wrap this up, is to me, I think it's a passage you go to when you want to sort of dig deeper into what uh, the writer of Proverbs 38 and 9 might have meant or had in mind when he said, give me neither poverty nor riches, feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and I deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and I steal and I profane the name of the Lord. So just give me just enough. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. And I want. So with that, I think that's just enough for today. Thank you for joining us at the table. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at the table. And we'll see you next week at Table Talk. Blessings, friends.